stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm your host, Tracy Reinick, and this week I'm joined by Maddie Johnson, the editor of the Income Investor Newsletter here at Zach's, and an associate stock strategist to talk about our favorite topic always, retail. But we're back to covering the retail innovator disruptor guys. We're not we're we're over the the old style retail yeah, now. So is Wall Street apparently. Yeah, they're over it too. Those stocks crashing down. But some of the other ones are not the ones that are on the disruptor side. And so um, we've decided to take a look at it again because when we did this show in 2018, we had some of the disruptors right. We did have Stitch Fix yeah, was in there. Um, but we were focused on a couple that I feel have let me down on the disruption. <laughs> and one of those is like Williams and Sonoma. I'm still waiting for the West Elm hotels. I don't <laughs> know where true. those are. <laughs> they were supposed to be here by 2019. They clearly are not going to be here. Nobody's even mentioning them. They're building one in like Detroit, one down in Savannah, I think one in Indianapolis. Okay. And then I'm not sure right. where the other ones were. And Detroit is still waiting because the Shinola, speaking of disruption, That's right. they did it. They already opened in downtown Detroit a beautiful old vintage building that I looked up the other day because one of my friends is going to a wedding and he's it's in that hotel and he's staying there. Oh and God, I'm like, oh, I'm well, you know, yeah. I was like, how much is this? Maybe I should go to Detroit and hang out in the hotel. And it was $550 a night. <laughs> And I'm like, it's Detroit. What is wrong with you? He's he got a special wedding rate of like 325. But still, still 325 dollars a night. Yeah. So that's really in line with their brand, though, which is a little well, bit more is. upscale. It's, I mean, the watches aren't cheap. No, they have the leather goods aren't right? cheap. I mean, no. I guess I can go in there and buy a journal. Right. And that's still probably $95. <laughs> exactly. So it does go along with the brand. So I'm waiting for West Elm because they were opening up in Detroit too. But maybe we're all going to be waiting for a while on that. I don't don't know what's happening. Yeah. But I think isn't West Elm, they are they are now doing the renting of the furniture, I, I believe. That's a new thing. The yes. New York Times was talking about this. Like I can rent my couch now and then when I'm tired of it or just like, man, I need a new color, they can take it away. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know. That's well, kind of disruptive. One of the companies that we're talking about today, I think you can rent home goods. You can? I think with Stitch Fix, I think you can rent. Um, no, oh, no, no, that's rent the, rent runway. the runway. Yeah, rent the runway you can. You that's can right. Rent, We've talked about this. Um, like pillows. Yes. I personally think is a weird concept just yeah. because I, I mean, who knows who has. What, whose pet has fleas and someone maybe doesn't wash I don't know. themselves regularly. And what kind is of renting. pillows? Like couch pillows? Yeah. Okay. Like, well, like home decor pillows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Maybe but, they get rid of them after you rent them. I like. do think they like they probably go through like a strenuous <laughs> dry cleaning yeah. process. But like if you need new pillows that badly, set aside some money. <laughs> and, Just buy them. And go to Target or But maybe or you're having goods. a party and you want like a little bit different motif. Oh, so yes. then it might okay. make some yes, sense. Yes, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. But like, uh, I, I don't know. So let's start talking about Rent the Runway because that's one of the ones I wanted okay. to cover today. So they are not public yet. No. But they are a possibility in the IPO channel. This is, the, I'm not like announcing any kind of announcement when I it's say that. It's been rumored. Though. Yeah, this is all rumors, um, like a lot of these companies. But we have just suddenly seen some companies that were rumored you know, file for the IPO. So especially this year. Yes. So this is a big year, as everybody knows, for the IPOs. And so Rent the One Way would be one of those that people are talking about. That's all we're saying. And as of March 2019, they had a billion dollar valuation. They've raised 337 million now in venture okay. funding. Most of their uh, business is done online, but they have five now, five standalone stores in the major cities in the U.S., including here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go into the store to get that uh, designer gown, you can do that. But we were looking up some of their plans here because I wasn't as familiar with what their monthly subscription plans are like. And they have two, uh, according to their website. One is called the RTR Update, and that's when you can have four items at once at home. You get one swap out per month, and it's $89. But if you do the trial, you get it for 60 days for 69 
And then the second one is their most popular, they say, on the, on the <laughs> site. It says popular, popular. And that's the unlimited. And that's unlimited swaps, four on constant rotation, and you get a bigger selection of items to choose from, 600 plus brands. The other one only has 400. And you get premium designers in that one. And, oh, I didn't write down how much it is. It was like 159 a month. Yeah, 159 a month. Okay. And and the free trial, I don't know what the free trial was. It was like $80. So okay, $80 that's right. off two months. Okay. So that's not so bad. And a lot of people are using the Unlimited for like to get work clothes. Yeah. Because a lot of jobs, well, certain jobs, you need something a little bit nicer. You, you don't have the athleisure office like some people do. Right, right. <laughs> so um, it just is more cost effective to rent the clothes than and you're staying in style because you can do it by season, obviously. Mm-hmm. You're getting the newest things in um, than the other way around. So they've been in business 10 years now. 2009 is when they launched. So they've been around a while. A lot of people use Rent the Runway for like if they have a a function, like a corporate function where they need some kind of nicer gown for women. Yeah. Um, that makes it easy. We were looking up before we came on the podcast whether or not they rented out prom dresses because I was like, really? Would they? I don't know. But they do. They So FYI, all you people out there, you don't – you can get a real nice like designer really gown. Really nice gowns, yeah. For a lot less. I mean, I mean, I'm just jealous because, I mean – not that like I didn't appreciate the experience going with my mom, going to we went yeah. to Lord and Taylor and we like got my dress. Yeah, but it sure. was like, you know, I would also have appreciated it as, you know, when I was seventeen having going online and having all these choices with these top brands. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God. But yeah, um, so I've rented from Rent the Runway for New Year's Eve. Okay. Um, in a friend's wedding. And it was great because you pick well, you're able to pick your your normal size, what you are, and then an extra size. You're like, oh, then you read okay. the reviews. If, does it run small? Does it run true to size? Does it run big? And if, if you think that this might not fit me in my normal size, you get an extra size to try on. Okay. And what's nice here living here in Chicago is that we do have the store, the, the physical store. Yeah. So what you can do is you can get, um, just as a, a personal example, because I'm in Chicago, the store is here in Chicago, you can have the items – um, shipped to the store so that oh. you can try the items on in the store, in the fitting room with Rent the Runway um, employees there. Yeah. And if, some, if those, let's say those two tops, those two dresses just don't work, there's other options there. There's like plenty of other options that are in the actual physical store. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to like leave quote unquote empty handed. Right. That you would sometimes find like have to do like in a normal retail situation. Yeah. But other, but if you don't, you know, live in a city that doesn't have a rent the right. runway store, you obviously get shipped to you, and then you can kind of decide if it's if it works or not. Yeah, it's nice they send the two sizes. Oh, it's so that's nice. really good. Yeah. Okay, so that's like the first model of one of the disruptors that's out there. It's like basically the renting of the clothes, and then that's different though than one of the ones that did go public, which is. Um, Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix, yeah. Because people might get them confused. Like, what's Stitch Fix? Because that also has like a month – or no. It doesn't have a monthly rental plan, does it? No. I believe I th- it – I thought it had a monthly fee. I don't know. Does it? Um, but it's a little different because that one, you you do this whole test online to figure out what your style is. And then you work with an online stylist, your own personal stylist, who then will send you outfits in the mail every month. And then you can either purchase those items or you send them back, right? Yes, that's that's the model. You do have to pay a $20 styling fee for each shipment. Okay. So that's so there's there is no something. monthly fee. Yeah. There's no monthly like box fee. You just have to okay. pay the, the styling fee. Okay. And the thing with them is that they want to keep you, well, any of these want to keep you as a client. And their active clients in this last quarter were up 17% to 3.1 million now active clients. Uh, But that is down in the growth from a year ago when it was 30%. 
act, uh, in the growth of the active clients. So, but that's not surprising. The bigger you get, the harder it is to grow at these 20, 30, 40% on active clients. It just is once you're getting into the millions of active clients. So it's still nice to see the double digits. Yeah. And they um, are really expanding that expanding on the men's segment. So for all you guys listening out there who are like, oh, they're droning on about like prom dresses or whatever, Stitch Fix is really going after the men's market. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of Lululemon doing the same. Mm -hmm. And now they are more loyal, apparently, according to this last conference call. Once they get them in the system, they're less likely to cancel and leave out of there. Well, so, I mean, how easy it is, is it to receive a box of clothes that fit you and know they look good on you, and then you just buy them right there, you know, right? at the store? Well, I know a lot of my guy friends um, who use Trunk Club, which is a very similar model to Stitch Fix, and they love it. So That's through the, Nordstrom's That's now, through right? Nordstrom, which okay. is JWN. Yes. Um <laughs> They've had it rough. People forget, but Trunk Club was its own entity, yes. and then they were bought out by Nordstrom. Exactly. Okay. Um, so like that, that like lazy way of getting clothes, yeah, clearly works, right? But that it's and just like it's a like different... an outfit is sent to you once the stylist like talks with you and everything. Yeah. So then they get to know kind of what your look is. Exactly. I mean, Rent the Runway has a. You have to take a survey basically about like well what before you like sign up okay um for like one of like the update or unlimited you're like well what clothes are you shopping for like what's your yeah. what's your style like what you know yada 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 so like then you kind of are this like broad range of with 400 plus brands it's narrowed kind of for you so okay they also have kids at Stitch Fix. At, they also did on Rent the Runway, too, yeah, I noticed. That's new. That's a newer area. Runway. Yeah. So they're really expanding into the kids. For Stitch Fix right now, the kids and they're expanding in the United Kingdom. So that's all just started up. That's a small percentage of the overall business right now. So not having that big of impact. But you would assume the UK, as the brand becomes known over there, that will become a bigger portion. Yeah of what's going on. And they also said during that quarter that their algorithms are doing better with the women in figuring out what they want to be buying. So not just the stylists, but whatever algorithm they have running on what you are buying and or sending back and all of that is making the women customers more loyal too, because obviously I want to get clothes I'm interested in. So once yeah. if the computer's figuring out what I like, then that will help me stick around. So the women are still the big the big drivers of Stitch Fix business for now, but I kind of like that they're expanding on the men's side. For sure. So Stitch Fix up big after their recent earnings. Um, just as a comparison, so Stitch Fix, if you compare it with Nordstrom, which has the trunk club in there, yes, it's a smaller por portion of their business over there, but Nordstrom... Um, Trading very cheap, just over nine times now because it's one of the ones that everyone's like, they're doomed. They're yeah. not going to make it. And um, they pay a dividend yielding almost 5% now because the stock price, you know, stock has really come down. Stitch Fix, no dividend, obviously. They just went public in 2017. PE is 91 now over at Stitch Fix. So you are buying the growth. That's sure. what you're buying here. Um, with this new kind of model. So, okay, so we covered kind of that that model, but now there's a new guy on the block, I feel, on that just went public, Revolve. Revolve. I don't know if anyone else out there is paying attention to Revolve. You might have because it had the big surge on the day of the IPO, which is close to Beyond Meat surge. At one point, it was up 100% on the day of the IPO. <laughs> I think it finished up like 90 or something. Mm -hmm. And then it got a pop again, and um, it's still hot. You know, got a lot of the traders in there messing around with it now, obviously. But ticker now is RVLV. It now has a market cap of two point four billion. Okay, it wasn't supposed to <laughs> when it went. It's supposed to be at least half of that, but fine. Everybody's thinking bigger things. So, what is Revolve? Why is that? How is that different from like a Stitch Fix or these other ones? So Revolve is like. I don't want to say like your basic online like retailer, but because it, it, but it is like that's how it's set up. So yeah. think of like ASOS is like another good example okay. where it's like this like central location for all of like the top trendy brands. Okay. Um, trendy as in 
um, these are what the 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 kids are wearing, the youths are wearing, okay. if you will. So, what is their who's their target audience? Is it like thirty and under? Yeah. Okay. Um, just because they have done. What's unique about Revolve is that they partner with Instagram influencers. Okay. And they use Instagram influencers to wear the product on the site and then on on specifically on Revolve's Instagram page. And then these influencers own Instagram pages. They'll okay. be tagging Revolve, hashtag, hashtag Revolve revolve by so and so like the all these hashtags will have revolve in it okay so these influencers that'll have 750,000 followers a million follower followers will be like well what's revolve and then they'll go to revolve and they'll see like oh well I can get my favorite brands on here and I can and well and I don't have to go to a mall or I don't have to you know go to a typical old style department store and it's really cool and it's like yeah. you know it's young and it's that's that's what makes them unique it seems like they are really crushing it on the instagram side then that they've figured out instagram for retail i know a lot of them have 100%. but that that's like huge it sounds like yeah. driving their business they're huge at like we were talking about today they were huge they're huge at coachella Okay. So they they are known specifically for their parties at Coachella. Okay. And they are part like they are parties and like you have to be invited. They have yeah. DJs and all the influencers are there. And these are like top grossing, if you will, influencers. Yeah. Like they make money with their sponsored posts. Okay. Um I feel like if anyone's who's anyone gets invited to their revolve parties. And it's just that's for the like past like I don't know, three or four years now, it's like, oh, yeah, the Revolve Party at Coachella. Okay. So it sounds like as Instagram rolls out um, ways for revenue and, like, you know, that ways that brands can actually be on the site and you can buy, like, right from the site and all of that, that Revolve is going to crush it when they do that. Oh, 100%. Okay. Yeah. So, like, we've also talked about a lot of influencers who have partnered with um, – like Nordstrom, for instance, and Express, um, EXPR, to roll out their brands, uh -huh. um, which is really smart, um, right? They have, like, um, the capital and, like, the mass and, like, the brand awareness to do that. But one of – one influence in particular, Song of Style, she used Revolve to roll out her brand, um, which I'm like, well, that's a perfect yeah. combination. That's a perfect partnership. Um, it's the audience. It's um, – it's like you have the the base right there already. I mean, you're already working with probably them in the past with with Instagram partnerships and at Coachella and everything. So okay. it just made sense probably. So they carry clothes, accessories, shoes, I saw. Yeah. Beauty. Beauty. Beauty was an interesting category though. Like it could they be a threat to Ulta and Sephora? I don't personally think so unless they roll out. A rewards program. Okay. I'm a huge Yay, shopper at rewards. I know. A huge <laughs> shopper at Sephora. I have a ton of points there. It really just over like the past like six months, I've all of a sudden gotten just spent spent a lot of money at Sephora. <laughs> and I have all these points and I'm like, well, I have to keep spending money there to get more points. Right. And then to use my points for all of these free samples and the, the good like basically the goodie bags that Sephora offers. Right. And the same thing is at Alta. Yeah. Once you start shopping there religiously, so to speak, you it pays off. Yeah. So why would I buy why my beauty products, the same beauty right. products, products at Revolve, and not get anything back? Right. It doesn't financially. It doesn't make sense for me. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wondering when I looked at it, and I feel like for those who are in these really good rewards programs with these other brands, you feel like you're almost like you know, cheating or something if you do buy anything somewhere else that you know yeah. you can get at the other one. And then you do feel like, well, that was dumb because I get points and all this other stuff over here. Um, okay. So, because that made me a little worried when I saw the beauty category on there. I wondered. And what... I will say beauty, it's going to be the trendy beauty brands. Okay. okay. The beauty brands that you're, you're going to scroll through, you'll see an ad for on Instagram. Okay. And be like, oh, what's that? Yeah. Oh, it's probably at Revolve. Okay. So Revolve doesn't actually manufacture anything of its own. 
These are all. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. It's all brands you would know. Like I was looking at some of the apparel, and it I saw Free People all over the place, which you're, is owned. You're going to see Vans. You're going to see Nike. Yes, I saw the Vans. Yeah. Uh, Free People is owned by Urban Outfitters, for those who don't know. Yes. So they have their own standalone stores, and they sell in the department stores, and now they are also supplying Revolve, basically. Yeah. So if in a roundabout way to get Free People... You can also... And free people's hot right now. Like yeah. that yeah. boho chic style is really, it's been on trend, I would say, f- I don't know, for a few years now at least. And I, so I would also uh, think that Revolve and like the buyers at revolve.com are good about seeing the trends and see what brands are good at following the trends. And like, like I said, where the kids are going. Right. Um, so if free people falls out of fashion, you might not see free people on revolve.com anymore. Right. For sure. Okay. Yeah. It seemed pretty trendy to me. Yeah. Just looking at it, looking at just what they, what their products were. Um, so I was wondering, and, and it, we may not know, but if any of the big wholesale apparel and accessory makers like a G3 apparel or a PVH, but probably G3 is what I'm thinking, are making anything that goes on Revolve site. They may be because they're the ones who are supplying a lot of the big brands um, that go to the department stores. Mm -hmm. And the site reminded me a lot of what you might find at like a Nordstrom too, or Macy's. Yeah. I mean, there's some, there's just so many brands on here. They very well could be. Yeah. Yeah. But that's another way to think about it when you're thinking about Revolve and like how their business model works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So also that's... one thing I wanted to mention about Revolve is they're one of the online retailers that uses the Afterpay payment oh, like yeah. option. Yeah, where yeah, yeah. So I think that's another draw for like younger And that's where consumers. I can pay, like say I buy a $200 dress I can buy in four payments of $50 four, each. Four installments, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I don't think there's any interest. So I, I've used that on, I think I actually might have used that on Revolve.com before. Okay. But I've also used that, I mean, you can use that on er, the Urban Ink brands yeah, too. You can. And basically almost any retailer now online. Right? Um, but I feel like Revolve was one of the first to, to implement it. Okay. Or at least that is where I've seen it. I saw it first. Okay. Um, but Afterpay is just one of the brands that does it, that offers it. Yeah. A firm is another okay. It's another like installment payment option. Yeah. And quad pay, I think that's another one as well. Okay. It's just it's just a thing. That's that's what's hot out there. <laughs> and right it is now. what it is what's hot. In installments. Yep. Okay. So that's one we'll keep an eye on here. Revolve um as one of the disruptor innovator type of retails that's out there right now. Um, But another one, this one has not gone public yet either, but it's uh, gotten a lot of buzz in the last couple of years. And a lot of people are wondering whether or not they're going to go is Glossier. Yes. They've raised 186 million now over five rounds of funding. They have a 1.2 billion valuation as of March, 2019, which is just slightly bigger than Rent the Runway, which I'm kind of surprised about. They actually have two permanent retail locations now in LA and New York. They have done pop-ups because we had one here yeah, in I Chicago. Went to it. Yeah. It was really cute. I wish it was permanent. I know. I wonder if they're not going to expand a little bit more on the permanent side. Yeah. It was in the West Loop too. And it was like, it was right off, uh, right off like the popular Randolph drag. Yeah. And I was like, this should, I mean, we should need be there. It should be. LCA. Come back. <laughs> um, so this is direct to consumer beauty yes and they had their own brands though this is what's different than this one from like a revolve though right glossier is the brand of glossier yes it is glossier they're not carrying yeah they're not carrying anybody else no okay so what what else makes it so hot is it just because their line is that good like their their brand is that good their yeah the brand is that good it's a lot of a lot of it has to do with the price point i think okay affordable what does that mean um, is it like under 20 bucks for I for don't know, some stuff some stuff okay um like the skincare is a f- what the wall let me just pull it up so like you can get um 
a lot of it is bundled together too. So if okay. you wanted to try something, you can get like a bundled of like three things for like 40 bucks. Okay. And full size products. Okay. Um, you can get masks, like face masks. <laughs> I can't say that word. Um, for like under forty dollars or sometimes even under thirty, and that's hard to come by, okay. I think. Right now in the skincare, the the wellness industry, like some good like if I feel like I have to shell out at least forty five dollars yeah. for a mask. Yeah. Um. So the price point is a, is an approachable, um, and like it's an a good entry point. Okay. If you're like, oh, if you want to start experimenting with like, with applying makeup and like using like having a skincare routine. Yeah. Um. But it also has to do with the packaging. Okay. So if you ever ordered something with Glossier, it comes in this like this quote unquote millennial pink, which is like, okay. like it's a very specific shade of pink and it's like it's a reusable pouch. Um and it's just like the font is 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 a there's something about the font that works and the shade of pink and like the fact that you can reuse the pouch for not just storing makeup, but like putting uh, tech, like your phone cord in in the pouch and then putting it in your work bag or something okay. like that. It's just everything just seems to like work together and like they use um, like the models are really diverse. Um, is and- there any staying power with it though? I feel like it, is it just a trend for right now or the next like year or two and then no one will care or can they innovate enough to stay on top as they are right now? I guess that's my question. I think they're going to be as big as they are as long as the skincare and beauty mega power, like as long as like that keeps on like being as powerful as it is as a business entity. Okay. If, does that make sense? Yeah. So, so as like, long as as long as beauty remains hot, then Glossier will remain hot, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, I and I haven't seen them partner with any big celebrity or no not yet. influencer because I feel like that's a potential avenue for them to go down. Like Glossier by so and so, and then that person will have a specific line at Glossier. I mean, that's money right there. Yeah. Um, but maybe they don't need to yet. They probably don't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you get a 1.2 billion valuation. Yeah. <laughs> so they have been asked many times about the IPO possibilities, obviously, because they've had five runs, five rounds of funding now. And they're just like, no, you know, we're not going there yet. But just like some of these other ones, you'd never know what's going to be right around the corner, especially with the big success of the Revolve IPO now. Yeah. I do have to admit, I was a little dubious when Revolve decided Same. to go. Yeah, I was like, eh, retail's not looking too Even hot though, right like, here. Even though I shop on, <laughs> on Revolve, yeah. like, and I would say I browse on Revolve fairly regularly. Okay. And I... And I always like now I like I know to like look on Revolve if I'm like looking if I'm like shopping for something spe- specifically I'll see if it's on that website, and I'll see like if uh, then I'll consider buying it on Revolve. Um, but I was like, oh my god, they're gonna go IPO. Yeah. Oh, and I'm like, oh no, oh, no, like right. it's not. It's just like it's another retailer to me. It's just like yeah. it's just another retailer in my eyes. But okay. But when you consider, I guess what they do beyond the online online landscape, then they are more than just... Well, they're able to use their data that they're gathering from people like you <laughs> exactly. to figure out what you're ordering, how often you're ordering it, and then they're able to keep their inventory a little bit leaner than some of the other retailers yeah. are able to do. And that's always a good thing with the retails to have lean inventories. For sure. So, okay, so we'll watch Glossier and see if that one goes. Um, I feel like we've covered a lot of the innovators now. Is that everybody? I think so. Okay. For now. Yeah. Uh, I'm still waiting on on Williams and Sonoma with the West Elm, the hotels. They might make the list the next time. Maybe. But nobody's even asking that I know of, like, hey, whatever happened to your hotels? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one who cares. Um, and Shinola, I guess, but nobody's ever talked about them going no. well, going they, public. No, because they have the, st- the store here in Chicago. Yeah, they have some, um, some physical stores now. And I would like to, I guess, for them maybe to make a ho- like 
that for them to open up a hotel here. Well, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I, but I am willing to go to Detroit to try it too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could snag a, an invite as a plus one with my friend who's going to that wedding there. There you go. <laughs> I got to work on that one. <laughs> okay. So let's recap the tickers too, because some of these don't have tickers yet, but we'll, we gave you a lot of different ideas on how you can kind of play this retail innovation side. So there was Stitch Fix, which is public, SF. IX is that ticker. Revolve is now public. RVLV. Uh, Nordstrom has the trunk club and it's the old school, but you're getting it cheap here. JWN is the ticker there. Then there's the old mainstays like Ulta, U-L-T-A, which I do own in my own personal portfolio. And then some of the other ones that are supplying Revolve, we know Urban Outfitters is because they have free people over there. So that ticker is U-R-B-N. We don't know about G3 Apparel or PVH, but those are G3III, I guess it's, I always yeah. call it. Um, I do own that one as well. PVH is just PVH. And then for the Instagram angle, and this is why I FB, man. love, yeah, I mean, Facebook, it gets no love because of the Facebook side, but Instagram is where it's at. I mean, basically Revolve would not exist without Instagram. It wouldn't. Yeah. Because it, it just wouldn't. Yeah. So... Instagram and it's figuring out how to monetize all of these influencers and the brands that are over there. So well, also they're figuring out how to monetize more than in like influencers are already monetizable. Right. right. Did I I think I said that word right? Yes. That so that's already innovative in and yeah. in and of itself, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, so a lot of good things are actually going on on the retail side. It's not all doom and gloom. Everybody's being Amazon. No. You literally just have shopping. to go on Instagram right. to find the the disrupt the disruptors, yes. The, yes. the retail disruptors. I'm that's sure where th- they all are. That's yes. how I find exactly. Re- that's how I found Revolve. Yeah. Uh huh. And I'm sure the Shinola Hotel is over there too. Absolutely. Um, okay. So we'll be back again next week with. Um, or at least I will be with some more stocks on the market edge here. So you don't want to miss a single episode. You want to subscribe and get us. We are on Apple Podcast as the market edge and on SoundCloud. And I know a lot of you are over there to get the two for one special deal on SoundCloud with the value investor podcast as well. And we're now on Spotify. So get us over there on Spotify, but be sure to get us somewhere and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>